I'm Molly Stanbury and welcome to Mac Most, the video podcast that shows you how to get the most from your Mac, iPod, Apple TV, and iPhone. This week in the news, Adobe announced Creative Suite 3, actually a series of software bundles. The suites will include new versions of such popular products as Photoshop, Illustrator, Dreamweaver, Flash, and Acrobat that are engineered for Intel Macs. The suite should ship in mid-April iPods may be good for your hearts. Medical students are using their iPods to learn what different heart murmurs sound like. The American College of Cardiology found that using an iPod to listen to recorded heartbeats can double the chances of a doctor correctly diagnosing a heart murmur. In another iPods are good for you story, Nike Chief Executive Mark Parker said that Nike plans to make all its running shoes compatible with its Nike Plus technology by the end of the year. Nike Plus allows runners to track their workouts with an iPod Nano, and they get a listen to music and look cool just doing it. If your fifth generation iPod has locked up or frozen, you may be able to reset it and save a trip to the Genius Bar at the Apple Store. To reset a video iPod, toggle the hold switch on and off, then press and hold the menu and select buttons until the Apple logo appears. This takes about 6 to 10 seconds and you may need to repeat this step. Also, different iPods have different reset procedures, so you might want to go to ResetiPod.com to find out how to reset your iPod. Is your dock too big or too small? It's really easy to make it just the right size. Simply roll over and click on the vertical bar in the dock, and then you can click and drag it to whatever size you like. Speaking of docks, do you have too many apps cluttering up your dock? Here's Gary to show us how to get your dock organized. Hi, I'm Gary from MacMost.com and I'm going to show you how to clean up your dock. If you look at my dock you can see that there are a ton of applications here. So much so that it goes all the way across my screen. And I've seen docks that are way worse than this with three or four times as many. And it's very hard to find what you're looking for here. Remember what applications are there and where to find them. So um, I really should keep it more organized but I've already started because I've created some folders. Like for instance this folder on the right is called Utilities. If I click and hold I get a list of aliases to various applications. So these are where I keep applications. Maybe I do these every day but I like to have them in the dock for quick access anyway. So I want to show you how to create one of these. All you need to do is start off by creating a new folder and say your documents folder. I'm going to call it my doc apps. And I'm going to drag and drop some aliases to some applications there. So I'm going to open up my applications folder. And what I need to do to create aliases is drag it over, but then just before I drop it, hold the command and option key. And I can drop an alias to the address book there. Uh, let's go ahead and also grab, say, backup and BB Edit. And let's look and see what else we've got. Maybe uh, let's do the calculator. Great. So I've created this folder with four aliases in it. Now I need to go up a level and look at this folder here so I can drag it, my doc apps, and I'm going to actually drag this over into the dock. Now I can't drag it over here to the left where the applications are because that's reserved for say dropping a folder full of documents onto an application and the application will open them all up. But I can drag them over to the right side of the screen where you can actually drag documents to. You can drag folders to it as well. So I'm going to drop my doc apps there and there it appears. Now I can click and hold and have quick links to these four applications. I can also simply click once and it will open up the folder itself which was already open and this is a good way for me to quickly access it so I can um, drop uh, new applications there or, or take ones out that I'm not using anymore. So as you can see this has created a much uh, more organized uh, dock for me having these folders here on the right and I probably should take some of these over here and actually organize them into folders as well. Uh, this has been Gary for MacMost.com with your tip about how to use folders in your dock. Many users are accustomed to a two-button mouse. But how do you get contextual menus if you're stuck with a one-button mouse? Jay is here to show us what contextual menus are and how to access them. Hi, I'm Jay from MacMost and today I want to show you contextual menus and how to access them. Contextual menus are a bit like a box of chocolates. Um, is that They um, vary with whatever application you actually use them in. To access a contextual menu 
you, if you have a two button mouse, you can simply right click on the second on the on the uh, on an item, and that will bring up the contextual menu. Um, many of you are stuck with a single button mouse, and the way that you can access a um, contextual menu with a single button mouse is hit the control key and then click with your mouse, and that will bring up the contextual menu. Is um, it varies with applications, so if I go over here on the dock to iTunes and I again control click, it brings up a contextual menu that, that shows the, some various options including play, move from the dock, or whatever. If I go ahead and switch to iTunes here, and it brings up um, my iTunes with some podcasts in it, and let's say um, you wanted to find out a little bit more about an episode of a podcast, you can again option click or right click on a particular podcast and it brings up a contextual menu. It brings you a bunch of options including update podcast, get info, uh, you can actually rate the podcast. And something that I find really fu handy is the show and finder option, where if we click on that, it will actually find the video or audio file in your in a finder window for you so that you can access it directly okay this has been Jay from MacMost.com and this has been a little tutorial on contextual menus in this segment we'll answer your questions about how to get the most from your Mac Annie Kennedy writes how do I disable fonts I'll never use to disable groups of fonts such as Chinese fonts open font book from your applications folder then highlight the Chinese font collection and then select Disable Chinese from the Edit menu. You can also disable individual fonts this way. Many of you might watch our sister podcast called Podcast Salad where we feature the very best video podcasts. We thought we'd take the time to introduce you to some of our favorite podcasts here as well. The Rumor Girls are two of our favorite video podcasting stars and better yet, they use Macs. Recently, Carla got a brand new MacBook. I'm your uncle, Patty is your aunt. Here we are again. <laughs> well, I do have to say, Carla. Uh, wait, can I say something? I've been dying to tell the people. Tell the people. I bought myself my very first computer that I bought on my own. With her own money. With my own money. She's so happy to say that. Anyways, and this is my new MacBook. And so I haven't named her yet. So I have to name her. And then but I why bought... is it so colorful? Yeah, but I bought skin. This is my new skin. Wow. I got it at decalgirl.com. And then That's cool. I bought a matching one for my baby Nana. Oh, they're so cute. Isn't that cool? Mac Most Loot is our contest segment where we come up with an Apple related question or challenge and send a randomly drawn winner a prize. Last week we asked the question what was a dog cow? A dog cow was the icon that looked like a cross between a dog and a cow. Hence the name. The dog cow lived in the print dialog box of pre OS X Max. And our randomly drawn winner of a USB flash drive is. Peter Hey Do. Way to go, Peter. And this week's challenge is. What other device besides the Macintosh from Apple was named after a type of Apple? Here's a visual hint. Send your answers to loot at macmost.com. Thanks for watching MacMost Video Podcast. If you want to contact us, have an Apple-related product you'd like us to review, or would like to sponsor an episode of MacMost, you can email us at videopodcast at macmost.com. Be sure to visit our website for the latest news and to vote on the stories that you think are the most interesting. We'll also be posting tutorials and tips to our site throughout the week. This is Molly Stanberry for MacMost. See you next week. If you're not satisfied with the size of your dock, it's really easy to make it just the right size. No fonts were actually disabled during the filming of this podcast. <laughs>